All righty, let's get going. It's about 11.02. And uh, for those just joining in, thanks for attending. My name is Jason Goodman. I manage our customer and product marketing here at Resilio, and I'm going to be hosting the webinar. And I am super excited to have Danny Yoon joining us today. Uh, Dan is a co-founder and creative director at Mr. Wolf. He is a creative genius. He's worked with Autodesk Flame since its inception, has over 20 years of experience in creative and visual effects. His experience spans film and commercial VFX, feature main titles, graphic design, and TV episodic work. And prior to Mr. Wolf, he's worked for other companies such as Imaginary Forces, Digital Domain, and Motion Theory, among others. Danny, sir, it is great to have you. <laughs> Thank you for that awesome intro, Jason. Um, I'm excited to be here Um, talk about, uh, you know, Resilio and syncing and all that stuff and how it's really helped our uh, company uh, grow. All right. Yeah, let's uh, let's dive right in. And just a, a quick agenda, you know, so we're going to give some company background for both of us. Danny's going to spend some time talking to you about the challenges they faced prior to Resilio. And then we'll talk about re I'll give a quick overview on our product, our core product, and what it does and what its components are. And then we're going to dive right into use cases at Mr. Wolf. And then towards the end, we'll have some time for some Q&A. So with that, uh, let me just give you a little bit of background on Resilio. For those of you that don't know us or new to Resilio, we're a software company founded in 2016. And our focus is really on enterprise customers that place high value on their data. Uh, you may know of another product called Resilio Sync that's really focused at the consumer space. The product that we're gonna be talking about today uh, in the context of Mr. Wolf and their deployment is Resilio Connect. It's a completely different solution and it's really tailored to the enterprise. And I think if there's, if there's one thing that combines or that is a thread among all of our customers from really big Fortune 100 companies to very small studios like Shep Films, a very small company, is that they all place really high value on their data and timeliness matters. They need quick access to their data wherever it may be um, and it has to be reliable as well. So Danny, could you just give us a little bit of a picture about Mr. Wolf, who you guys are, what you do? Um, I start off, uh... In 2005, um, co-partnering with uh, uh, Motion Theory um, and uh, doing effects on um, Autodesk Flame. So uh, I did a lot of commercials and um, also had some TV shows and, um, and music videos. It was uh, really amazing creative time. Uh, then in 2005, um, no, in 2011, uh, Amicably part of ways and got into uh, TV episodic work um, right at the beginning of the explosion of streaming and, you know, uh, Netflix creating their own shows and, uh, you know, Apple coming on board and stuff like that. So uh, over the years, we've grown. Um, we have our main offices in LA and also going to be specific. Um, uh, then we've also opened, we also uh, have a place in New York, uh, Vancouver, and Atlanta. Um, and uh, we we do a lot of TV shows. Um, a lot of, uh, we do like uh, The Walking Dead. Um, for some reason, we do a lot of blood kind of <laughs> gore kind of stuff, uh, uh, which is apropos to our name. Um, and, uh, but there's a lot of invisible effects um, that we do and also, um, you know, high-end uh 3d cgi so it's throughout the pictures meaning all the posters and interspersed or is it trailers are all a mix of all the above right right we kind of do it all yeah it's amazing stuff well shall we uh dive into the more technical side of things and what's happening from a it and tech perspective and i'm just curious you know before you guys got started with Resilio, just what was happening. I know that COVID hit, so much going on. Um, just can you talk to where you were functionally from a 
data movement point of view and what some of the challenges were also on the stories? Uh, biggest challenge is the fact that we have four offices that need to collaborate and work together on the same shows or different shows. Um, so, you know, um, we were moving a lot of data around and that became a bottleneck. Um, and uh, we tried, uh, you know, a couple solutions to sync up, but at the end of the day, um, uh, we we're using like basically traditional SFTP or media shuttle um, to just kind of manually sync stuff. And um, we did try, you know, one sync uh, program, but uh, what ended up happening is um, we have so many files, which is the nature of uh, VFX. Um, you have uh, individual image files for a sequence for a shot or a scene. Uh, you also have the actual renders. So that's another set of individual um, uh, files. So we got like literally millions of files. And if um, the, the sync job would pile up and it would just be indexing um, and not even getting to the actual syncing part. And so then, then we would scramble at the end of the day and just try to get move stuff around. So that was one issue. Um, the other issue was say a show turns over and uh, we call them plates, um, the actual uh, camera footage that we need to work on. So as we're downloading from the client, um, then we would collect it in one place and then we would have to upload it again to each city or the city that's working on it in conjunction with you know, the other offices. Um, so that became a bottleneck uh, from the very start of a uh, project or an episode. Um, then the other thing was um, uh, if we need to pass shots around in setups or um, collaborate, uh, which I mean, we uh, that's really important to us, uh, trying to sync up setups and then uh, we would upload, download. And then even if we had the setups um, in one place, they might break because they're looking for uh, elements that uh, haven't been sunk up. And then we'd have to track that down manually. Um, and uh, with episodic TV, every year um, there's a new camera. Um, they keep on packing in more data, shooting on larger formats. It's it's kind of crazy. Um, so within a span of like less than like 15 years, we went from standard def, definition, resolution, to HD, to 4K. And now we're seeing, um, you know, more often than not, uh, 6K or 8K footage. Every time you go um, that next step, is four times the data, even though it's like um, double the width and height. So it's four times. So that that's a huge impact uh, on the whole pipeline. So massive payloads and right. many millions of files. Yep. Data sets. They could be large files or small files because, yeah. uh, you know, with VFX, uh, when you save out a setup, it might be like a hundred little files or that one set up. And then, then you have the big, large images, um, which there's, you know, thousands of them for like a show. And in the context of that, so the tool set that we're given, whether it's off the shelf software, storage tools, storage replication tools. I mean, you think about global file systems, whether they're cloud hosted on-prem, whether they're traditional scale out NAS approaches, they are all predicated on a hub and spoke model, or really what we call yeah. point to point. And what you're talking about when you get into larger file sizes and many millions of files and more sites, this hub that all changes must route through really becomes a bottleneck. Yeah. So I'm curious, you know, were you guys experienced that in this bottleneck? You you talked about indexing times and sync not even being able to keep up. Um, so I'm curious, like, did, did this happen to you guys? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that when we're, 
when we're slammed, you know, it's, uh, we have pressure deadlines, um, you know, uh, we have to, uh, meet deadlines for air dates and, uh, it's, it does get crazy when it did get crazy. Um, when at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, uh, the sink wasn't working and, uh, we would have to collect everything manually and a coordinator would have to literally babysit, uh, and upload, um, or download, uh, in like the early morning or late at night. And, you know, uh, you know, these people are on OT, um, and I can see like, you know, uh, emails coming in at, you know, midnight or like later, um, saying like, okay, yeah, everything's, you know, ready to go in, you know, in terms of the, like, uh, having the assets prepped. Another thing you mentioned to me earlier on was this concept of chaining and, uh, you know, point to point, another strategy is, well, you sync from A to B and when A to B is complete, you go from B to C and so forth, whether it's a NAS, a server, and as your file sets grow, of course, this becomes more complicated and time consuming. And right. by the time you get over to, you know, in your case, you've got four sites, but even in a simple one like this, where you're chained up to three NAS systems. By the time you get to NAS3, you're completely out of sync. Right. Um, this becomes an issue uh, when the initial turnover or a, a new episode comes in. So, you know, we're downloading uh, via Spera or Media Shuttle uh, from the client. And then um, back in the old way, uh, you know, you'd have to wait for, you know, terabytes of data to finish. And then you start uploading to the other offices, um, you know, Vancouver, New York. Uh, Atlanta, uh, depending on if they're working on the show. Um, so then that's another, you know, three to six hours. Um, and we can't control, um, what we've also run into is we can't control how fast um, our clients' um, servers are. So uh, we've run into situations, it could be a Spera, but, you know, they've throttled their system or their having a lot of vendors pulling down from their uh, website and, you know, it could take 24 hours to get plates. So then you lose all that time because then you have to wait, upload, and then try to maybe optimize it by uploading to Vancouver and New York at the same time. But then that eats into your bandwidth. So you, you guys, uh, decided to move forward with Rizzo Connect. And just from a practical point of view, before I talk a little bit about the product, um, you know, one of the advantages is it's peer-to-peer, -peer, which simply means that you can read and write to any node in any direction. So you can make a change in Vancouver and it can be instantly seen by all the other sites and so forth. So I was just wondering, like when you, when you first moved to Connect, what was the experience like? And did this affect your business, this new architecture? Um, right off the bat, uh, I knew Resilio from the consumer um, product, which um, is totally different. And then, uh, but then, you know, I read about um, the enterprise solution and I was like, wow, on paper, this could be you know, the solution. So just doing a demo for two weeks, um, it really like I, I saw that uh, it totally convinced me one hundred percent. At the same at that time, we were moving offices from Culver to um, El Segundo, and uh, we couldn't move in like one weekend, so we literally had to like overlap by like six months uh, while we're working. And so uh, the only way we could do it was to try to sync up the current jobs. Um, in Culver and El Segundo at the same time, and then start moving departments so that we can all work on it. So that was our initial uh, solution for this. And it worked amazing. Um, uh, we were able to get everything synced up and then uh, it facilitated our move. And then going forward um, with our jobs, all those other issues that we encountered uh, before, like the long indexing times, uh, kind of went away. Um, it truly is like a, real-time indexing um, because, uh, you know, you have agents that um, are installed on 
the NAS directly. So it has access to, you know, all the file system like uh, right there. And uh, say for instance, with the, uh, the turnover stage, uh, when we're downloading plates um, and camera footage from uh, our client, as each single image file is being downloaded in LA, uh, is that image file is immediately being synced to Vancouver and New York and Atlanta. And the um the bottom the the download from our client will always be slower than our upload speeds. And then once you have um, one single frame up in Vancouver, then Vancouver can be singing that to New York or Atlanta. And then it's just a huge mesh and whoever has the file, uh, whatever server has a file will be syncing in all different directions. So then by the time you're done downloading in LA, the, uh, the footage is already in all the offices right when it's done. So that's amazing. Hence the that's, that's the leverage. Uh, that's how this mesh network is uh, leverages that. Yeah, so let's just give people who don't, who aren't familiar with uh, Resilio Connect a quick view. So software only solution, there are really two aspects to it. There is a management platform where you have a global view of everything from your data flows to your jobs. And you essentially create sync jobs and manage everything centrally. You know, we've got some customer, I, I think our largest customer has, you know, 150,000 agents under management. Um, and then the agents are the worker bees, like Danny said, in, the, in his case, you know, living on a Synology NAS, um, the worker bees that are actually doing the work of the replication, the indexing and everything. And one view, so, you know, you have an agent on a system. If you're a hybrid worker, for example, you would see the agent view. And if you're working on a Mac OS, you're just simply working through Finder, which is this view on the right here. If you're on Windows, you're simply on Windows Explorer. And uh, again, the, the secret sauce here is that all agents can communicate with other, all other agents. And then on the head end side, the server side, you actually can control how they do this. So not everything has to be in a full mesh. You can route it in a number of ways. All technical stuff we can get into later on. And then you know, in terms of just, as Danny was speaking to earlier, Danny, if you want to just elaborate a bit on what you're seeing at Mr. Wolf and how does this surface up just from a technical capability point of view, what kind of advantages are you guys seeing? Uh, the web management console was really impressive to me. Um, it's it lives on a like a simple web server, and it it's not really has nothing to do with the agents. It's just literally a web page server, a private one, um, that gathers the information from all your uh, nodes, and then you can create sync jobs. Uh, through a super easy interface. Um, it has um, uh, multiple users so that uh, I'm the admin and then um, I have a read-only account for production staff to just keep an eye on um, the sync jobs or you know they might wonder if like, oh, did we um, sync this uh, folder for this show yet? And so they can log in and not touch anything and just see like, oh, here's a list of jobs. Um, and then I have um, the IT guy who's like a sub admin that can actually, uh, you know, manage all that and uh, stop jobs and when they're ready for archiving or we're done with the job. Um, that was really, really cool. Um, we use, um, our primary use case is uh, the server nodes, it's just automatic. And then we have a handful of um, like a creative director or um, some remote guys in New York that use the uh, Resilio Connect desktop, where you have the Finder view and you're not you're not syncing 
you, you see all the files in that sync job. So you can see all the files, but those are like stub files and you can uh, specify it. Oh, I just want to, to sync this shot folder. So a remote artist will only be working on like a handful of shots. They don't need to sync the whole job folder, which would be, you know, terabytes of data. Yeah, so that's what we call selective sync. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love all the analytic graphs and stuff. It's yeah. it's, it's pretty cool. And, and uh, the previous screenshot was actually from your console view. Yeah, if you go back one, um, you can see that, uh, you know, we blurred out the names of the shows. Um, but if you squint, you can see the file count and the data transferred. Uh, like the top one is like 2 million, uh, 80,000. Um, that's a big show. Uh, a typical one is like 1.5 million. Uh, it's, you know, I tried other solutions and uh, trying to index that many files, you know, big and small is a huge feat. And it just knows instantly when a file or folder is changed and it starts syncing right away um on a chunk level so it, it it's pretty cool to see as you're rendering in one city or another um parts of that file image are already syncing to the other sites and so by the time you're done with your render um it's already there um and uh i call i my analogy is like, it's like a dripping, a leaky faucet. It's a dripping faucet versus uh, when you have to queue up, when you have to do a massive upload download, that's like you're turning on the fire hose, but then you're taking away bandwidth from all the remote users and internet access. And, um, and so this constant leaky faucet of sync, um, it, it just works and it's not actually taken up at, at the moment, it's, it uses very little bandwidth as opposed to if it piles up, then you have to saturate the uh, your bandwidth. So you talk to me a bit about the benefits that you're seeing. And I are you thinking about these from the business side, the technical side, a combination of both? Oh, right. It's it's everything. Um, uh, you know, um, I'm. I kind of manage the money in the company as a, as also doing the creative. So I'm always thinking about, okay, how do we be more efficient, um, you know, and uh, save money. And, um, and also uh, this is pretty much eliminated. Like uh, it, it, there's a lot of benefits. It, it's eliminated the bottlenecks um, and time is money. Um, and people aren't babysitting, you know, uh, IO. You know, it, which is just kind of crazy that, you know, you have someone just sitting there watching the progress bar and then waiting for it to be done. Um, also, uh, uh, if we go down this list, uh, peace of mind, right? The the sync jobs um, are working, it's robust, and we really don't think about it once it's set up. Um, and there is the, uh, the safety of having uh, setups and assets in multiple physical locations. Um, and we'll talk about uh, the disaster recovery uh, later. We have an example of that. Um, the other thing that's really important is uh, I kind of call it um, our virtual hard drive. Like it's, it's a unified file system that everyone sees and it's as if we're all just looking at the same pass, same hard drive. Um, uh, but we're syncing on a, a project level. So it's literally not, we're not syncing the whole NAS, but we could. Um, but uh, so there's none of that, you know, that eliminates the confusion of one office, like doing something and then we have to pick it up in another place and you know it's late 
trying to meet a pressure deadline and we're like, oh crap, you know, we're missing X element and we can't render this thing. Um, and uh, the other benefit that happened was, uh, you know, there would be a lag time between like uh, when, you know, a team would be working on a bunch of shots and if I'm creative directing or supervising that show, you know, I'd have to wait to look at it. And so it might be a couple hours, but once I get that Slack notification, like, oh, I'm done with this render. Can you look at it? Um, I just go on my computer, um, look at the NAS, bring up the shot, and I see it right away. So uh, that that um, that loop of review and, uh, you know, render review and, you know, uh, approval uh, is much tighter now. Um, and then also uh, for delivery, um, you know, we, we're not waiting on last minute renders to collect them all and then upload to the client who's waiting for them. Um, they're all there and, you know, uh, that speeds that operation up too. Uh, lastly, um, uh, you know, uh, archiving. So when a job's done, uh, we stop the sync and we pretty much know that that folder, uh, that show is synced up in, uh, we only now archive in LA to, uh, you know, tapes and hard drives and uh, being confident that everything that everyone's done is on that drive. Um, so, uh, so that saves time and money and, and also the media archive media. And also um, uh, we have every, all the archives in one place. Were you able to use all the storage infrastructure that you previously owned? Yeah. Um, uh, the the we have the Synologies, um, and we try to make them uh, the same size. Uh, but we also have a um, custom uh, Linux NAS um, that um, we can deploy. That used to be in Culver, but we're going to deploy that in. Uh, when we expand um so uh yeah so it's but they don't have to be like uniform size or capability um because um you know uh you have flexibility with what you're syncing so uh you know like i said before with the remote artist they might have a small raid attached and they're doing selective sync per the shots that they need, but they can see the stub files for every other file and folder. So they see the overall structure and they can pick and choose like, oh, I need to cache this, uh, this, um, you know, couple elements or one NAS might be smaller than the other. So you're not syncing, you know, every job. Um, but um, uh, in, in general, we try to sync every active job. Shall we? I think we actually have a good picture of this in our use cases section. Um, so what we were going to do now was walk through some of the key use cases for your business. And here's sort of an overview of each of them. And then penciled in the very bottom is co-location. You have this opportunity to add a colo facility. We're not going to get to that today, but we can talk a bit about it. Um, so just diving in big picture view picture to the right this is the infrastructure that we talked about mm -hmm. and um maybe you can just give us an overview of this and, and how does is this a building block for your virtual office i'm kind of curious it's uh, like, you know most people yeah, think of a virtual it, office it it's definitely... like maybe one site or but you'd have got four sites and all these remote contributors right um you know, uh, the advantage of the way Resilio and is like fr fundamentally built uh, with the mesh syncing and the mesh network. Um, you know, as you add more nodes, it gets even more efficient. That's what's brilliant about it. You know, like if it were just like uh, you know, uh, just LA and Vancouver, um, you know, uh, you could probably 
find another solution that would suit you well. But once you add that third um, component or that third site, um, then you're kind of stuck. Um, and so Resilio, uh, uh, you know, overcomes um, the need for, you know, more than two points of um, sync. Um, LA and Vancouver are um, the largest sites uh, for sure. Um, we have um, the two NASs, which are identical, and then uh, New York and Atlanta are the smaller offices. And then we have a handful of um, remote artists that are working off of their own, like, you know, small storage. So it's all connected together. Um, and then uh, LA has more uh, CG render nodes uh, for re uh, rendering, you know, uh, large scenes. Uh, Vancouver doesn't have as big a server uh, facility, but we can talk to, uh, you know, uh, how we, how Sync, Brazil Sync is helping us um, maximize our um, our actual assets, like our uh, computing power. And can you speak a bit more about hybrid work and, you know, just maybe give some background on how did you start out with a lot of remote contributors or was everybody in the office then a few people have had to go remote during covid and are people uh, back in the office and or doing a hybrid how's it working there um yeah obviously you know everyone had to work remotely um we found a pretty good solution on uh with jump desktop so that uh you know we can see uh it's very um interactive and uh you know a high uh, low latency. Um, and, uh, again, it's like, um, you know, uh, people in, in our industry, um, people need to be able to play back footage in real time and, uh, see down to the pixel. Um, at the same time, we have security concern concerns. We can't, um, you know, uh, be uploading and downloading plates to someone's personal workstation at home. So, um, uh, uh, so, you know, the, this, uh, you know, this, this, uh, kind of helped because, um, everyone's, everyone's looking at the same file system basically uh, as they log in um, or they can be on prem and um, or if they're, if they are working remotely and they're doing the selective sync, then um, they do have access to uh, the actual files to take a look at it. Um, but in a very secure way. So one of the use cases that you mentioned was 2d compositing. Could you tell us a bit about this? Is this mainly on prem or? Yeah, we we uh we use a uh, um, Autodesk Flame and also Nuke, um and again like you know you know we have to be able to play off of the NAS um so you know we've we've looked at um uh we've looked at like maybe cloud storage or like you know um, having cloud. Uh, workstations uh the bottleneck is always like okay we need to we need to see the files in real time and uh, not kind of you know stream like uh remote is good but sometimes it's not good enough and so we do have to be on prem to uh qc quality control our renders um for delivery and um and then the bottlenecks of like, as you're rendering and you're rendering big files um, and you, you need to have, uh, you know, we're, we're working together on stuff. We might need an element from one office and finish the shot in another, um, you know, uh, trying to move all that data around uh, gets uh, gets really hairy. And, uh, and also, uh, you know, you got those bottlenecks of actually transferring the files. And then um, the other benefit that is really nice is, uh, you know, we save our setups all on the NAS. And since those are synced up, 
um, if we need to pick up a shot uh, from New York in LA because we're in different time zones, uh, because you know there's a quick fix and those guys are already done for the day, um, we can pick it up in LA and render it out and make our tweaks. Yeah, I, th I think a big part of what we were talking about in our last conversation was just rendering and the transformation um, that you've seen there. Right. And, and, you know, so we have an image on the right here, which is actually AWS ThinkBox Deadline. AWS acquired a product called ThinkBox Deadline. So this is what you guys are using for your rendering? Uh, yeah, for our Nuke stations and our um, Maya 3D um, stations at Houdini, um, we can use uh, leverage uh, uh, distributed rendering. So uh, it's typically uh, like for like CG, um, you know, it takes like an hour per frame, 30 minutes per frame, and you can't uh, render that on one machine locally. And because, um, you know, a shot might take, uh, 100 hours to render so you have to divide it up and uh, you know we have a um, sizable uh, render render farm with nodes um, so you know we could divide up that shot um, and assign 10 frames per node and then get it done 50 times faster um, but the the issue is um, before uh, you can submit a job but you're submitting it in that location. So an artist in Vancouver needs to use the farm in Vancouver and they submit it to uh, the ThinkBox deadline, which is kind of this manager that uh, divides up um, that render. And then the ThinkBox deadline clients are monitoring and they pick up that job and start rendering right away. And then they're all rendering to the NAS. Um, and so, you know, I kind of outlined uh, uh, that LA has more rendering power than Vancouver, and then uh, both places have more than New York. Um, but uh, we, it's like when we when we got the sync, we we started like realizing, oh shoot, this opens up all these opportunities. So we synced the actual repository directory for think uh, for a deadline. And now we have the ability to, if a, a Vancouver artist submits a CG render job, it that actual setup file gets copied to the repository. But since it's synced, that immediately gets shows up in all the other offices, which have deadline agents. And then those agents go, oh, uh, there's a new job. I'll start rendering. And the other critical part is if that artist in Vancouver uh, has a scene, they're using, you know, different image files for texture maps, the actual plate, um, you know, they might uh, paint something or have different, you know, different elements. And it, if those don't, aren't in absolute 100% sync, then the render will fail in LA. But because everything's synced for that job, uh, now we can leverage uh, the rent, our render power in all the cities at once. And so they're all rendering or, you know, you can pick and choose. And so now it's like, oh, um, you know, Vancouver is not rendering on, you know, 15 nodes versus, you know, the 40 that we have in LA, you know, uh, what we were doing before. Now can they can render on, um, you know, everything at once if, uh, theoretically. So that's been a, uh, a huge, um, you know, uh, kind of like revelation. And you mentioned and, that. And then, then the final step is once all these frames are rendered, uh, because rendering is slower than actual data IO, um, as a frame is rendered, it's, it's like, you know, the downloads and all that, it's all being broadcast to the other offices. And then when the render's done, everyone has that render.
So do you have a sense about how much time you're saving? I mean, obviously you talk about it being seamless. You can do this from anywhere just in terms of time savings and how that would impact production schedule. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's definitely a multiplier effect because you're not babysitting on render or on data IO. Um, it's like instantaneous and it's like everyone's in the same office. So um, you know, uh, time is money. So, uh, you know, I guess you can sit down and put a dollar sign on that, but, uh, it's just, um, it, it's definitely made us uh, a lot more efficient. And then you do want to talk a bit about 3d CGI, how that. Right. So this, um, this basically, shows you what the interface looks like. Um, that's the deadline monitor and, um, you know, all the jobs that are queued up or the past jobs that's rendered, um, you know, on the right panel is like each node, what each node is assigned to, you know, what frame range. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, it kind of works. It just works because we're thinking that the actual repository where the job file is, is you know collected into um and then we have a um uh, another layer uh a vpn network um we use open tier and all the machines that need to render or are render clients um communicate with the uh deadline database which is located in la so shall we switch gears Talk about DR. Yeah, in our previous conversation, you mentioned there was a site outage in Vancouver, a storage. Right. Room. Well, uh, yeah, this is what I was alluding to. Um, so uh, there was a planned uh, power outage um, in Vancouver and uh, like a month ago. And uh, when we went to restart the reboot, the NAS, it wouldn't boot up. And uh, later we found out it was uh, one, one bad RAM stick. Um, so, uh, you know, we have all the artists ramping up, you know, getting into morning and, uh, and we were scrambling we're like, okay, uh, we got machines you guys can log into in LA. Um, since the jobs you're working on are synced, uh, they just picked up, uh, where they left off, like literally, and we're working in LA remotely. And then, um, when we, uh, fixed the NAS and installed the RAM stick um, and the NAS booted up, all the work they did in LA was sinking back to Vancouver and then they just kind of like continued working. And it's like, it was as if nothing really happened. So that was a really awesome uh, moment. Um, and we weren't sinking um, jobs 100% across the board. And after that, uh, you know, point of failure, we're like, okay, going forward, no matter what it is, we're going to sync that job. And then one of the things you did, so you finally get this NAS back online, you bring it back online, and what was the resync like? Was it, you know? So, you know, um, I wouldn't even know. It probably just, did it overnight um and it depends on how much they rendered that day but it'd be you know we have a five gigabit connection um in la and vancouver and new york is like two gigabit so um honestly it, it wouldn't take that much time like probably like you know an hour um so you know if if you have a job um, that hasn't been synced and it's like, you know, a couple terabytes in like LA uh, and then you, you set, you know, create a sync, you didn't do it from the, from the beginning. Um, then it does take like a couple hours, you know, maybe up to eight hours uh, to have it synced up. But then, then after it's like all, everyone's on the same playing field, it's just a trickle to um, move that differential, you know, to all the places it needs to be. Um, so that's pretty crucial is you gotta, you gotta kind of like start off 
um, before you start dumping all this data. But even if if you don't, it's it's not that bad. But you feel confident that Resilio has you covered in terms of if you if you did have another failure. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you know we have four four places we can um you know recover the data from. Um, also, there is a um, kind of like a trash can uh, built in. So if you delete a file, um, it, that file doesn't get deleted immediately. It goes into the archive folder. And so, um, you know, obviously if you delete something, that deletion gets synced up to all the locations. But, you know, if you, if you said, oh, that was a mistake, then it's always there. Uh, in that archive file, you can recover it. And you can set how long you want that um, trash can archive file to um, stick around. All right, well, this is amazing. It's getting, so why don't we take some time to answer some questions? And one that came in early is, did you move to El Segundo for data centers and power costs? Or is just... Oh, that's, that's really, that's a great question because um, it is a combination of things. Um, it was a nicer office. Um, it was actually closer to our, the advertising agencies that we were working with on the commercial side. Um, we did the, you know, debate whether we should be in uh, Hollywood for more of the episodic work, but honestly, you know, um, everyone's remote. So that didn't really matter. And then the data data center stuff um, uh, really perked my interest once I learned we're literally next door to Equinix and all these huge facilities that have, um, you know, redundant power, diesel generators, bulletproof glass. And so that's our next step um, is to expand uh, into a co-location. And and definitely we will have a NAS in that rack or you know, a couple of racks that we get. Um, we will put Resilio on there. And uh it could be a render farm or it could be actual remote workstations. And um because it's all synced, uh you won't really know, you know, uh, notice the difference between remoting into our actual headquarters or you know office or in the colo yeah there was another question here about colo and what that process is like and will it require a migration um it would be similar to um our move from culver city to el segundo uh we had hundreds of terabytes of um products to sync up and so it's called preceding so uh, we literally would uh, sneaker net drive over a hard drive um, with batches of jobs, copy it to that NAS. So then uh, both our old Culver NAS and the uh, El Segundo NAS were preceded. And then it would sync up. And, you know, so for all those jobs, like hundreds of terabytes, 100 terabytes at a time. It would take like 24 hours and then once it's synced up then it's it's fine it 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 worked without a hitch and so that's what we would do um for the colo in the initial beginning when we move in is you know we're always working there's there's never any downtime so we're always in production so you know we would probably like have to sync up a uh, pre-seed like those five projects in the colo on the new NAS or whatever NAS were put in there. And then, but if you, but any new job after that setup is like instantaneous sync. It's, you know, because it's just empty folders. And then once you start downloading plates, it syncs in real time because, you know, of that trickle effect. So another question came in about the cloud. And is this, do you think of this as a private cloud or are you going to use the public cloud at some point? Would your rendering setup work with the cloud? Right. Every year we evaluate, you know, like going purely cloud. And 
I don't know. There's a lot of challenges because, um, like I said, in VFX, um, the the computing requirements keep on uh, growing, um, and it's it always outpaces, um, but what you can afford in the cloud. I mean, you know, it's it's all doable in the cloud. You just have to pay for it. Um, we rely heavily on GPU um, workstations, so that's a high premium um, with cloud-based solutions. Uh, storage is a huge, huge um, issue too. I mean, uh, it's getting cheaper, but we need, we we can't, we we need the high speed um, storage, which again costs a lot of money. Then there's uh, ingress um, costs. Uh, so basically, if you're going cloud, it's all or nothing to maximize um, uh, the efficiency of it. Um, but if you're in a hybrid situation it it's very difficult to do um, from an it point and also cost um, and logistical um, situation except the hybrid could work if you do incorporate resilio into it or some kind of sync solution um, but again you're going to be paying for those egress costs so that's why um, also my contemporaries um, in the vfx biz uh, we're all, we're all thinking about co-location or have already pulled the trigger on it. Um, and uh, the other appeal of the colo for myself personally is uh, we pay a lot in electricity um, at the office. So uh, that would save us a lot of money uh, to have it at another place. And it leads to, we have time for one last question. Did you make any changes to your network infrastructure to improve transfer times? Um, we only only really from like a two gig thing to a five gig network, and uh, you know, uh, we have an option to go ten gig or higher. Um, but like I said, uh, looking at that the trickle effect. Uh, we we don't really saturate um, when the sync happens. It doesn't really saturate our network. It's well below two gigabits at any at any peak moments. In general, it's like under it's about one gig, like kind of like noise. And then, um, but uh, when we're doing like the preceding, uh, that did max. You know, it it went full throttle on those, and so. Uh, it was really easy with the web management console to throttle um, the sync, uh, which uh, uh, worked really well. It just the instant you like uh, hit confirm on that, it it throttles instantly. And so we were having issues um, when we're doing the heavy heavy sync uh, with like our remote desktop um, bandwidth. But in general, it's like uh, two gigabit peaks but 99 percent of the time it's like well below that and to be clear you use the exact same network infrastructure you're not like adding no and rates. and if you think about the mesh network um that's a multiplier effect on your on your uh network because um as you're downloading plates from the client it's uploading right so you're you're maximizing download upload bandwidth right and then and then as um or like you know if if you're on like the far end of the mesh you're getting a folder can be syncing from four different points at the same time to populate your to hydrate your sync so um it's a multiplier effect on your total network, like, or from a single point point location. It's, uh, uh, Jason has better diagrams for that, but uh, like I said, the bigger the mesh, the more points it nodes in your mesh, the more efficient the sync becomes. Yeah, there's parallelism built in. Okay. I think with that, we're almost out of time, Danny. Um, why don't we just recap really quick? And then I've got one slide on NAB 
And I think we're going to have to call it a day. Um, so first of all, just thank you so much. Um, can you tell us just really succinctly like this notion of a unified virtual office, kind of just summar summarizing it up for folks, you know, at the end of the day, what do people want to take away from, you know, about Resilio at Mr. Wolf? Right. I mean, you know, you have, we have, uh, you know, offices uh, at, uh, you know, different geographical locations. We have workers, artists um, doing hybrid work, working from home. And uh, it's, this has been an amazing solution to have everyone basically work off at the same hard drive. Um, so that, that has, you know, so many efficiencies built into that. And also it just, um, you know, it just makes uh, collaboration um, like, you know, possible, you know, versus, you know, uh, you might hear of other companies that, you know, they have all these subsidiaries, but, you know, they, they're kind of islands on their own, but um, our company, we're truly like the op, all our offices work as one. And then um, in terms of performance, uh, the real-time indexing is is really key. Um, and also, you know, it, it, you know the speed's good, uh, great. Um, so, you know, with other solutions you might have, uh, you know, it might be performance speed-wise, but uh, they haven't figured out, um, you know, how to index uh, fast enough or, or uh, it all breaks down when you add a third node um, that you have to sync. And with that, we're just about out of time. I wanted to end, well, we have one more slide, but NAB. So this is our first time going to NAB. Danny, you're going to be joining us there. And this is just a call out to anybody who's going to be at the show. Uh, we're an exhibiting sponsor. Currently, this is our booth set up. We're going to be in West Hall. We would love to meet with you if you're going to be there. Uh, we should be doing some kind of social event or just come by the booth, put us on your schedule and uh, please talk to us. And Danny, we're also going to meet there. Yeah, uh, that'd be uh, awesome to see you actually in person. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and also uh, all the support uh, people that have really helped us, uh, you know, along the way. Um, uh, I can't say it enough good things about uh, the support team. Um, they they really do hold your hand uh, every step of the way um, from installation uh, to troubleshooting and to like uh, the really specific bespoke configuration setups. Um, uh, I have to mention that, um, you know, I had, there are some, um, we had to add on some uh, permissions um, uh, for the sync and they built uh, a special build for us in order to achieve that. And that was amazing. So, you know, I, I don't think I would have gone that level of support from, you know, any other company. Well, that is good to hear, sir. Alrighty. Well, I will see you and hopefully other folks at NAB coming up right around the corner. And uh, with that, thanks everybody. Um, so here's some basic information. We'd love to show you a demo, get in touch with us and uh, thanks. And with that, we're going to end it. All right, Danny. All right. Thank you, Thank you guys. All right. Bye -bye. See ya.